In this video, we will talk about absolute value functions. So we kind of already spoke about absolute value functions, and we said that f of x is typically just absolute value of x. Now, well, how do we uh, graph them? Well, we did a couple of them in the previous videos um, using just the, the rules for transformations. Now, usually when we talk about functions that look like that, it's best to kind of convert this as a piecewise function. Um, and the way that we kind of do that is if you think about what an absolute value function looks like, it just looks like a V shape. And the V shape itself, you can see that there's a little bit of symmetry here. Okay, so oh, let me write it like this. So you can see a little bit of symmetry. Okay, so you have um, the absolute value function being uh, symmetrical. Uh, and you can kind of even extend it a little bit to saying, well, this looks a lot like y equals x. And this looks a lot like y equals negative x. Okay. So that just basically means we can write the absolute value as a piecewise function where x is defined where x is greater than or equal to zero. And you have negative x if x is less than zero. Okay, so that's how kind of how we can define this absolute value function. So just another way that we can write absolute value functions. It's, a, it's actually a really good um, exercise for you to kind of know this because when you get to calculus, you'll be able to write absolute value functions in, in, um, in piecewise forms. So um, that's basically what it is. Now, what I really want to talk about the absolute value functions is it's not too much. I just want to make sure that we understand uh, how to find x and y intercepts and how to solve them. So um, so one of the things that I want to do is start off by solving absolute value equations. So let's start off by thinking about a basic equation like this. So let's say I wanted to solve the absolute value of x equals 3. So how would I go about solving something that looks like that? So a way that you can think about is, well, what exactly is absolute value? Well, absolute value is just a distance x is uh, from 0. So here it tells you that this absolute value of x is 3 units away from 0. So if you think of a number line and here is 0, well, there's one number that is 3 units away from 0. That's 3. Okay, but there's another number that's three units away from zero. That's negative three. Okay, so that means that here x can be two different answers. It can be three and it can also equal negative three. Okay, so that's basically the gist of it. So the absolute value can take in two values, a positive value and a negative value. Now you have to be very careful because absolute value, if you get negative three, this guy has no solution. And the reason why is because the absolute value is the distance that you are from zero. You can't be at a negative distance. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so typically absolute value equations. So absolute value equations have two solutions. Okay. The only time that it will only have one solution is if you have this. So if you have the absolute value of x equals 0, because the only value that that can be is just 0. Okay? So one of the things that you want to be able to do is to solve absolute value equations is isolate uh, the absolute value term and then break up the absolute value into a positive and negative answer on the right hand side. Okay. And then I'll write a little warning here that you cannot have an absolute value of a negative number. 
Okay, so that's a big no-no. Okay, so let's start off with this problem. So let's say you have um, four absolute value of x plus one is equal to um, eight. Okay, so one thing that you have to be very careful with is that um, you can't quite distribute the four how you would do with parentheses. Instead, you have to be able to get rid of it. So this is actually a multiplication, a multiplication with the absolute value. So what you have to do is divide by this four first. So I'm going to divide by this four. So I have absolute value of x plus one is equal to eight divided by four, which gives me two. Okay. And now what we want to do, because we isolated the absolute value, we want to make sure that we break it up. So we're going to take x plus 1. This is going to be a positive answer. And then you're going to have the same x plus 1 and have a negative answer. So once we break it up like that, the absolute value can go away. And now let's solve. So I'm going to subtract by 1. So x equals, three, um, x equals 1. And then I'm going to subtract 1. So x equals negative 3. So these are the two solutions. How do we know they're correct? Just plug them back in and you'll be able to get the answer. Okay. So let's look and do another one. So let's solve. Um, so let's say we had 2x minus 3 uh, plus 4 is equal to 5. So remember, we still want to isolate the absolute value. There's that 4 that's in the way. So you're going to subtract by the 4. So we have absolute value of 2x minus 3 is equal to 1. And then we're going to, now that the absolute value is by itself, we can break it up. So you have 2x minus 3 equals 1. 2x minus 3 equals negative 1. And now we have to solve these two equations. So we're going to add 3. So we get 2x equals 4. So then here, divide by 2. So x equals 2. And then the other one, we're going to add 3. So we have 2x is equal to positive 2. Then divide by 2. x equals positive 1. So those are my two solutions. Okay, cool. So now let's think about the function itself. So we know that the function, um, oops, not example. The function itself of absolute value looks like this. Okay. And you can compress it. Uh, you can shift it up, shift it down. But now one of the things that you can do is what we can find x and y intercepts. And if you remember uh, from algebra, an x-intercept is when the y is equal to 0, and the y-intercept is when the x is equal to 0, okay? So let's say we had uh, the function f of x is equal to 4, x minus 2, um, plus 2. And what we want to do is find the x and y intercepts of this function. So we don't want to graph it. We can graph them. You know that you're, you have a shifting of two units uh, horizontally. You have a multiplication of four, and you have a shifting uh, vertically above two units. So we can do that. But let's find the x and y intercepts. So basically, you remember, an x-intercept is basically where it, where the y is zero, so where it touches the x-axis. So that's the x-intercept. So where is it crossing it? Okay. The y-intercept is where it's crossing the y-axis. So when the x is equal to zero. Okay. So let's first start off by finding the y in, the x-intercept. Right, let's do x-intercept. So when you want to find the x-intercept, we want the y equal to zero. And what's y in this case? Well, the y is just the f of x f of x is just the y. So you're going to set that equal to 0. 0 is equal to 4. Absolute value of x minus 2 plus 2. So you're going to subtract by 2. So you're going to have 4. Absolute value of x minus 2 
is equal to negative 2. Okay, and now what we're going to do, we're going to divide by 4. So we got negative 1 half is equal to absolute value of x minus 2. And you can see here that the absolute value is equal to a negative. Can the absolute value be a negative? No, so there's no solution. So when you say that there's no solution, that means that there's no x-intercept. So that means that this graph does not cross the x-axis at all. Okay? Now, about, what about y-intercepts? Does this guy has y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is when the x is equal to 0. Okay? So when x equal to 0, so you're going to have f of x is equal to 4, absolute value of x minus 2, plus 2. So we're going to change the f of x to a y, because we know that f of x is just the y value. And then you just have this 4, absolute value of x, x is going to be 0, minus 2, plus 2. So y is equal to 4, the absolute value of negative 2, plus 2. This is equal to 4, the absolute value of negative 2 is just 2, plus 2. This gives me 8 plus 2, which gives me 10. So there is an x and a y intercept. The, the way that we write it is x comma y. So in this case, x was 0, and the y is just 10. So we have an, an x and y intercept, uh, a y intercept of 0, 10. So if we were to graph this or kind of get a little taste of this, then the y intercept is at 0, 10. So it's 0, 10. And then you just have um, no x-intercept. So that means that the graph itself doesn't even touch the x-axis. So it must look kind of like this. Okay, now I don't know if this is what it really looks like. But we can kind of predict a little bit of what the graph is. So um, now there would have been an x-intercept if you would have solved this equation itself. Okay, so if this if this was actually a positive, then you could have solved it, and you would have found the x-intercepts. And you can see that this x-intercept can have a maximum of 2. So when is it going to have a 2 x-intercepts? Well, if it crosses it like this, you can see that you'll have 2 x-intercepts. So here this guy has 2 x-intercepts, and then this guy you're always going to have one y-intercept, okay? All right, so that's basically a little bit of the gist of absolute value equations. Um, I don't want to spend too much about this because there is a lot of material, uh, but that's basically the gist of it.